Hi, how is everybody doing? Good. Enjoying the first day of Trailhead DX? All right, thanks for coming to my session. Uh, first, can I ask you a couple questions? Um, how many people feel that onboarding is a band aid for poor design? Nobody? Good, we're off to a good start. Oh, over here. How many people feel that if an app is designed well, it doesn't need onboarding? All right, we're a little better. Um, show of hands, how many people have heard of SLDS? Salesforce Lightning Design System? OK. So my name is Adam Doty, and I'm a product design architect at Salesforce. And I also happen to own our, and lead our efforts around onboarding and user engagement design. And I am here and excited to share with you today the latest addition to our SLDS design guidelines, uh, user engagement. Uh, and hopefully, I can convince you that onboarding patterns can be fun, welcoming, empowering, and effective. So like I just mentioned, along with other popular chapters in SLDS, like messaging and voice and tone, we have just added guidelines for user engagement patterns. Um, and today, I'll give an introduction to these guidelines, uh, define what user engagement means to us at Salesforce, um, and give you some tips on how to use them and review some common onboarding patterns. We will not go into all of the onboarding patterns. There's many different recipes, if you will. We'll go into a couple, give you an idea. The idea of the guidelines is that they're self-help, and you can kind of go learn on your own. Um, so first, let me define what user engagement means to us. So I'll just literally read this. Uh, throughout the Salesforce product ecosystem, we use engagement patterns to onboard, empower, assist, and educate users. These user engagement guidelines will help designers, developers, partners, and their teams identify business goals, put best practices to work, and leverage sample recipes and common scenarios. So I guess you're, you're, what you're, you're starting to see is that we've wrapped up some common onboarding scenarios into what we call recipes. So today, I'm going to cover three main areas, planning. So the most important first step is planning. So effective onboarding requires planning that involves storytelling. So in user experience is one of the major key tenants that we have, and it's, it involves storytelling um, and uh, knowing your users and experimenting. The second area we're going to go into today is scenarios. So these four scenarios that we've identified here are the most common user engagement experiences. Um, we bucket them up into four easily digestible chunks. One of them is called onboarding. The second one is feature discovery and adoption. The third is help and troubleshooting. And the fourth is learning and skill growth. And finally, we'll go into some best practices. There's many best practices that we've captured in our user engagement guidelines. I'm just going to go into one today. And um, my personal favorite is storyboarding. And I'll go in a little bit about how storyboarding can help your teams. Uh, before we go much further, I want to share this great quote from Jason, Jason Fried. He says, here is what our product can do, and here is what you can do with our product. They sound very similar, but they're completely different approaches. Does everybody catch on the nuance there? So it's, it's less about showing your users what they can do about what your product can do. Oh, look, we have this great capabilities with a great feature. It's flipping that and talking about how they can become empowered with your product. Your product is essentially a tool for them to get their job done. So it's, the first step is it's important to set the scope and goal of your, of your project. Avoid shoving in onboarding after the fact, right? So uh, the four steps in planning the scope of your product we have identified as identify the aha moment. So typically, this is during the, your user's uh, first few minutes with your product. And it's, an, it's, it's sort of a, a goal that you set out in the future that you, you want to sort of help them get to quickly and efficiently. Um, address the needs at all stages of your user's journeys. Um, help maximize their experience and efficiency. So are you designing for beginners? Or are you designing for experienced users? Or are you designing for users that may not have been logging in after a while, right? So you need to re-familiarize them uh, with some uh, flows or some features that may have come out since they were last in. Uh, very important is fit the onboarding to your audience. So we use personas, and I'm going to go a little bit uh, later into how to use our personas and where to access our persona cards. Extremely effective in identifying the type of, the type of users that you're dealing with. And then you can map that to the type of onboarding that's appropriate for them. Um, finally, super important, and this one often goes sort of left behind, is experiment, instrument it. Sort of get feedback any way you can 
to establish what's working and what's not. Ideally, you have an A, B testing framework. Um, at the very least, interview your users. Ask them what's working and what's not. Um, if you have the ability, you know, launch uh, multiple onboarding tactics at the same time and instrument it. If you don't, try one for you know, low tech. Try one for one week. Switch it up. Try different content the second week. Get some feedback from your users and then tweak as needed. Another quote I would like to share from Sam Uhulik, who runs an amazing site and super funny at times called useronboarding.com. Amazing teardowns of, of uh, popular webs and app um, uh, onboarding experiences, and he provides sort of voiceover. Uh, he defines onboarding as uh, anytime there's an opportunity to increase the likelihood that users are successful when trying to adopt your product. I thought that was a great summary by, by Samuel. All right, into the good stuff. So our, uh, like I mentioned earlier, our user engagement guidelines are broken down into four common user engagement scenarios. And in each of these, we captured who the scenario is targeted to, what kind of user engagement pattern and content is best suited for that scenario, and then finally, why these are the best patterns. Again, we're just going to briefly sort of introduce you the four of them today, and then you can uh, visit the guidelines online on your own time and get into the details. The first one is onboarding. So onboarding is the first opportunity you have to introduce a product or a service to your customers. So it's, it's the opportunity to really leverage your brand, the voice and tone of your company. Um, it, it's often an underserved sort of opportunity to sort of just say hello. Welcome to the company. Welcome. You might be a new employee or it might be a new release. You might be excited to launch a new app. Really don't underestimate the value that this, uh, uh, this uh, scenario has uh, for your users. The second is feature discovery and adoption. Um, so simple prompts go a long way in raising awareness uh, for your users. So think about just lightweight prompts that sort of pop up and say, did you know? Or our dashboards have been updated. Check it out now. Or there's a new feature over here that you might not have seen that Salesforce just pushed. Um, you don't always have to rely on our feature prompts and onboarding. You, you will see later today, I'll make a nod towards it. But tomorrow, there's a session on how you can create your own prompts on our platform. Uh, help and troubleshooting. So anticipate your users for assistance by providing contextual tools and mechanisms. One example is our help menu. Our help menu is a contextual platform that allow in on Lightning and in Sales and Service Cloud and other core products. We have a help menu. You can go in and you can inject your own contextual help content, or you can leverage ours. Um, whether you're on or off core, this is a super effective pattern that the mental model is just unbeat as far as where users go for help. So don't us underestimate the help menu. And then learning. I mean, you're all had Trailhead DX. Everybody knows what Trailhead is. It's an awesome learning platform. Um, learning is an ongoing journey, you'll hear us say a lot. Um, so users that are new to a product or a feature area, um, or even experienced users that might have been using your product or your app for 10 years, don't underestimate the opportunity to continue to bring them on a continuous learning journey. You know, invest in writing your own content. Or invest in you know sp using Trailhead, Trail Mixes. To free, it's a free solution, and look for ways where you can cross-reference that content into into our products using our mechanisms. All right. So scenarios and recipes. So these four scenarios, as I mentioned, illustrate the most common user engagement experiences: um, onboarding, feature discovery, adoption, help and troubleshooting, learning, and skill growth. It's helpful to sort of understand the scenario that you're dealing with. Uh, as you use our guidelines, there's certain onboarding mechanisms, whether it's a bubble or whether it's a welcome mat or whether it's a help menu contextual article, all lend themselves. I'll have pros and cons for the, for the scenario that you're dealing with. Um, also, these guidelines are just example flows and scenarios and recipes. They're not meant to be used as is. So don't look at our recipes and go, oh, I don't have salt or I don't have pepper. I got to substitute it with something else. They're meant to sort of be mixed and matched in the way that best suits your need. But we do use them as a framework to sort of pull you through and just sort of help inspire you and give you an examples of what you should uh, implement. So we're going to go into just one of these eight recipes now and sort of unpack that. Um, a super common scenario is first time in a new product or a feature. So think about when you've had an update or a change or an enhancement that you want to communicate to your users. Um, look at the use case from the perspective of your user's journey with your app. 
don't necessarily look at a singular moment in your app. Look at the journey as you begin to use the app over the course of a few minutes or a few days. Put yourself in their shoes. What is, what is it like from the moment they log in to the, to the a few workflows through and they've been using your app for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes? Uh, in this example, uh, the user is greeted with a welcome mat announcing there's a new release or there's a new feature. Um, as they navigate around your app, they, stump, they come across the feature if you didn't directly link them to, link them there to it. And we have a doc composer or a doc panel that pops up with a video inside that sort of gives maybe a, a quick sort of demo of that feature. Um, the following day, the following week, the following month, if they haven't adopted your feature, you might think about putting sort of little lightweight prompts in there to sort of nudge them. Think of it as sort of like a wedge where you can come in early, come in hot with sort of, oh, we got a great new feature. You have the opportunity with the welcome mat to kind of take over and capture their attention. And then over time, you want to sort of back off and you want sort of less and more subtle prompts. All right, so this was just one of the recipes we went through. And here is a snapshot of the rest of the recipes that you can find on our guidelines on SLDS. Um, there's a neat little handy table on the right where we cross-reference on an x and y axis the feature and the prompts that work best for those scenarios. So be sure to check those out. Um, and we also have captured a bunch of best, best practices online. Um, one of the ones that are you know, sort of to help determine the right engagement experience for each user in situation, um, I'll share one very effective best practice that I like to use a lot. It's called storyboarding. Um, and it is kind of what it sounds like. It's literally drawing on a dry erase board um, and rolling your sleeves up and getting dirty and sort of storyboarding out your end user's experience over time. And literally getting with your partners and your stakeholders and sketching what it is like the first five minutes they're in the app from the first five hours to the first five days. Here's an example of a few storyboards. Um, small storyboards that I have in my notebook, um, but you can imagine this is a very effective exercise to do in a room with paper and posting them up on a, on a chalkboard or a dry erase board. Um, it's a very effective low-tech way to capture and tell the story. Um, it, does, it allows you to sort of approach the problem solving from a human-centered perspective. Um, it allows you to quickly visualize and communicate sort of your ideas with each other. Um, one other important thing that I want to emphasize is sort of focus on a collection of moments over time. Don't just focus on a singular screen that says, oh, I really want the user to click on this. Think about what the experience is for the users with your app over time and try to stitch those together the best you can. What is the onboarding story that you want to tell over the course of, and for every, every, every situation might be different, you know, for the first 10 minutes to the, we, use, we often use a, a framework called the tens. The first 10 seconds, what is the experience that you want to tell them? Welcome to Salesforce. We're glad you're here. The first 10 minutes might be, all right, our aha moment is we want to show them how to close, um, close a deal. So we get to them that quickly. The first 10-day experience might be like we want to show them how to close X number of deals in a certain amount of time. So you start thinking about what are your goals in the 10s, 10 seconds, 10 hours, 10 days, 10 months, so on and so forth. Um, so we're working to build declarative tools on our Lightning platform um, to create all of these patterns. Um, today, you can build some of these with point-and-click tools and setup. Others may require custom code or a partner solution, like Pendo, WalkMe, Improved Apps, one of those. Um, all the guidelines that I presented to you here come from the perspective of the primary persona as designers and developers working on and off core. So all the best practices can be applied to whether you're working on Lightning or whether you're working on Heroku or whether you're working on a completely custom rolled app. The concepts of the best practices completely apply to anything in our ecosystem. Even You don't even have to be using Salesforce products if you don't want, but you're probably here because you are. Um, for Lightning developers, the, you know, the, 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 what I want to stress is that some of them cannot all be achieved today with point and click tools. So don't necessarily look at this, what, you know, what am I constrained that I can and can't do today? Think about what the best situation is for your end users and then back off of that and see what's available and what the cost is to roll your own code or use our declarative tools. So thanks for stopping by. Be sure to check out these and new additions to SLDS today. And finally, a bunch of resources for you that you can nerd out on designing your own experiences. So we have a sketch kit where all the sort of pretty graphics that I showed are, can be captured in there. We have a trailhead uh, for a bunch of user experience um, for uh, 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 identifying best practices around personas and research. 
um, in an awesome Medium um, uh, article around uh, data-driven personas as Salesforce, which I mentioned earlier, which will really help you identify your use cases. And then finally, tomorrow at, two, at 1 p.m. is the sister session to this session. And it will be sh we'll be showing off the new platform capabilities around declarative prompt authoring. So some of the prompts that you saw in my demo, um, you can click and assign to pages just with point and click tools. So come check that out. And that's 45 minutes. We'll have much longer. I'll touch on this. We'll be a little bit of repeat. We'll have much longer time to have more of a Q&A from the audience and give you a demo of the product. Thank you for coming. <laughs>